Hey guys, and welcome back to the series where we talk nothing but fancy Premier League. So for game week 5, the champions elect, the Bretsby Babes, have picked up 49 points. 49 points is an improvement on the last two game weeks, but for the third week running, it's one point off the average of the other 3.5 million players. So basically, I've been bang on average for three straight weeks, and to me, that still feels underwhelming. To be fair, I was never expecting much from this game week. It was never going to be exceptional, because it was clear before submission that my team certainly needed strengthening, with a lot of my defensive options not even featuring in the starting 11. I did know this before the deadline, but I just couldn't justify making too many transfers and spending too many points. So now, with this game week out of the way, I think it's time to finally activate that wild card, clear out some of the dead wood, strengthen the shambolic team in all areas, and hopefully bring in a much bigger point tally for game week 6. It was basically just my attacking three that brought in the significant points for this game week, with Costa and Vardy both contributing a reasonable six points each. It was Andre Gray who was transferred out of the Bretsby Babes this game week. With only one goal in his first five efforts, it's clear that his homophobic tendencies are getting in the way of his goal scoring ability. So in came Iheanacho of Manchester City. To be fair, without much money in the bank, Iheanacho was one of the only strikers I could afford. But with a mouth-watering fixture at home to Bournemouth and Aguero still suspended, he felt like a very safe bet to bring in for at least one game week, and it certainly paid off. But with my team still clearly needing strengthening, it was time to get that wildcard activated for game week six. So now, let's move to the next section where we look at my provisional wildcard team. Okay guys, so because my wildcard is activated now for this game week, my video will be formatted just a little bit differently than usual. Normally, I take you through my team and also the players to watch for the upcoming game week. However, because my wildcard is now activated, a lot of those players to watch would already feature in my new side. So what I've done is picked my provisional starting 11 and I've renamed the players to watch section as wildcard alternatives. These are players that haven't made it into my provisional starting 11, but are options that I'm certainly considering before that deadline hits. And as you can see, there's lots of options to consider. So this is it. This is how my provisional wildcard team is looking for game week six. To free up money elsewhere, my goalkeeping options have become significantly cheaper with Pickford and Mandanda my current choices. John Stones returns to my defence alongside Coleman and Lovren. I've also brought in McCauley and Kingsley as cheaper defensive options. Seamus Coleman makes it into my side after a very impressive performance against Middlesbrough. Baines was in my considerations, but at 0.2 million cheaper at 5.4 million, Coleman seemed like the better value option. Currently, I feel like my midfield kind of picks itself, with four players that I'm finding very hard to get away from. Out of the four, the biggest no-brainer for me is De Bruyne. After two exceptional game weeks and away to Swansea in his next fixture, I'm feeling confident that he can deliver the goods yet again. Sanchez, the other big hitter in my midfield. He's another explosive top quality player that can bring in points on any given game week. But with that said, Sanchez does have a small question mark over his head for me, and that's simply because he has a very tricky tie against Chelsea in this game week. And in my opinion, Arsenal always seem to have such a torrid time at defeating their London rivals. So I'll certainly be keeping that in the back of my mind prior to the game week deadline. As for the other two to complete my midfield, I've included the bandwagon players of Capoue and Antonio. Typically, I'm not the kind of manager that likes to have the same players as everyone else in your mini-league. But once again, these are just two players that I'm finding too difficult to ignore at the moment. In the case of Kapue, I look at his price tag and think you just can't go wrong for 5 million. And he proved me wrong again against United, so with his next fixture away to Burnley, he once again could be in the points. And as for Antonio, you can't really argue with that price either. He's got 5 goals now in his last 4 games for West Ham. And despite their bad form, that doesn't seem to be stopping him from scoring. I think over the duration of the season, Payet will slowly become the better midfield option for West Ham. But, like I said, you just can't ignore that price or form. So provisionally, I have to include both of these. So, as you can see, for my midfield alternatives this game week, I've gone for Chadley, Jung Min Son, Walcott and Coutinho. Look, I don't want this to seem like I'm just jumping on the bandwagon of every player that has a big point haul in the previous game week. And to be fair, if West Brom are playing anyone else but Stoke, I may not have included Nasa Chadley. But after an exceptional point haul of 21 points and playing a Stoke side who have conceded eight goals in the last two games, I feel like Chadley's a very good, cheap midfield option who's predominantly a forward, especially if he's on penalty duty as well. At the start of the season, Hyung Min Son is a player that never really came into consideration. But in the last two game weeks, Son's put in two excellent performances and has made his way back into that Spurs side. Before making the switch over to England, he averaged a goal every three games in Germany, which is a very good return for a midfield player. And at 7.4 million, he offers a much cheaper alternative than the likes of Deli Alley and Christian Eriksen. With Middlesbrough, West Brom and Bournemouth in the next four fixtures, he seems like he could be a very clever option. And now with Harry Kane injured, that puts a bit more responsibility on Son to get some more goals. 
Similar to Son, Theo Walcott's another player that I never really considered at the start of the season. And rightfully so, I think everyone would agree he's been disappointing for the last couple of seasons. He's faced quite a bit of criticism for even being in that starting 11 for Arsenal at the moment, but that hasn't stopped him picking up two goals and two assists in his opening five games. I feel like Walcott's gone about his business fairly quietly so far, and he's only four points off the tally of Alexis Sanchez so far this season. So actually, at 7.5 million, Walcott, who's predominantly a forward, could be a very shrewd option for FPR managers, and certainly a much cheaper alternative than Alexis Sanchez. Sanchez clearly the better player, but 3.5 million is a significant price difference and could free up a lot of funds elsewhere in your team. When I look at my provisional starting 11, my only concern is not much Liverpool cover, and that's why I've included Coutinho in my wildcard alternatives. Liverpool's attacking options have looked very, very impressive so far this season. And with Hull and Swansea in the next two fixtures, it seems pretty crazy not to have at least one of those options in your side. Coutinho, Firmino and Mane all look like very good options for FPL managers. So at the moment, I'm concerned I may regret not having at least one of them for the upcoming game week. So, as you can see, for my attacking options, Sergio Aguero comes straight back into my side and he's partnered by Austin and Lukaku. In all fairness, Aguero was the main reason that I held back on utilising this wildcard in earlier game weeks, because I was keen to bring him back, but I didn't want to have to spend loads of points to do it. With a mouth-watering fixture away to Swansea, it was also an easy choice to give him back the armband. And to be fair, that's probably the only decision that I feel bloody comfortable about. Charlie Austin's a player that I'm really liking the look of for the upcoming game week. He's definitely my punt for the weekend, but honestly, I've got a very good feeling about it. Look, Southampton's form in the Premier League hasn't been great so far, but they got their first win against Swansea last weekend and have built their confidence in other competitions this week, with wins in the League Cup and the Europa League, all of which Charlie Austin has scored in. He scored four goals in a week now, so surely now he's earned a place in that starting lineup in their away trip to West Ham. And much like Stoke, West Ham have conceded eight goals in their last two games. So regardless of whether Southampton win there or not, I really feel confident that Austin will be in the goals. For that kind of price range, I think a very good alternative for him is Marcus Rashford. For United, it's been a very negative few games, but Rashford has been a shining light in that team and will now surely be one of the first players on the team sheet. So at that price, I believe that Rashford is also a very good option. Finally, my last striking option is Romelu Lukaku. Scoring four goals in his last two games, he's a hard player to ignore. With Everton showing some ambition, bringing in some players and spending money, it seems to have put a smile back on Lukaku's face. And he seems to have put all that transfer speculation about him leaving the club behind him. There's no doubt that when Lukaku's in form and focused, he's clinical. So like I said, he's difficult to avoid at the moment. My alternative for him is Diego Costa. At 10 million, that is a big ask. And he is more expensive than Lukaku, but he's also been exceptional so far this season. And I believe there is a chance that he could really rile up the Arsenal players and do very well in that away fixture at the Emirates. Alright guys, and that is it for my Game Week 6 wildcard special. I hope I didn't blab on too much and that you took some information away from it. If you've got any input on how my team should look for this game week, then make sure to comment below. 